Welcome to your favorite weekly $5 rock of automotive news. I'm Matt from the New York Motor Club, joined by Mike Spinelli, as usual. K Possum Mike. Good. Um, I'm okay uh, yet again. Um, all hopped up on Fresca. Nice. I as well had several Frescas before the taping. Did you now, really? I, well, I love Fresca? Fresca. It's the crack of soda. That's why you like it. Is it? You just can't have It's just after, after. Anyway. I didn't even realize they still made it until now. <laughs> Right. Oh, but it's good, though. It's delicious. Try a Fresca. It's good for you. Grapefruit soda. Can we do some autom automotive yeah, news, yeah. please? Okay, let's get started. Lexus LFA. It's been in, it's been a, a few car shows for the past, what, three years uh, yeah. in various versions, Coupe, Roadster, and now been spied uh, testing on the Nürburgring in both a street trim version and what appears to be a race car version with a fixed wing and a, a nice little carbon fiber uh, race bumper. Now, what what do you think uh, Lexus is, is going to end up actually doing with this car, Mike? I don't know. I mean, it's it's interesting. They just sort of popped up out of nowhere. All of a sudden, there's this there's this LFA with the giant fixed wing, and you know the other ones had the retractable wing in the back. So um, you know, and there's the front splitter and everything. It's very motorsports looking. Yeah. Um, well, at first it was like, is this car ever going to come out? You right. Know, it, seemed, it seemed like it was the eternal show car that, you know, like the challenger almost that was like, will they ever make this thing? Right. You know? every, every single car show, I mean, the last three or four years, I mean, it seems like every car show there's an, oh, there's the LFA. Yeah. Uh, there's the LFA again. And when the hell are we going to see the, like, the real one? Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it's, there's so much sort of sh stuff shrouded in mystery, this car. I mean, it's like there's the rumor that, that it went around the ring in, in 7 minutes and 24 seconds. I mean, if this thing is actually, you know, it's a 500 horsepower V10, according to, to what we've heard. And it, it looks like a nice aerodynamic shape, real good, good uh, you know, intakes on it, really well designed mid-engine, I think. Um, but, you know, 724, I mean, the Zonda F did it in 728. You yeah. know what I mean? So this thing would have to be a serious rocket ship if it could if it could really do that. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, I don't. It could be really that fast. I mean, in that case, it would be. Uh, it, it's a pretty high end. You yeah. Know, it wouldn't. It wouldn't really be uh, a competitor to the um, the Nissan GTR or anything. But the interesting thing with this one that they saw is it really looks like a motorsports competitor, and a lot of people are saying online that you know, a is. is Lexus planning to expand its motorsports activity into GT racing. Yeah. Um, maybe GT1. I mean, they're in, what are they in? Rolex? Well, yeah, well, they've, they've run their Daytona prototype cars in the Rolex series now for a few years, I think since 2004. Um, and they've done, you know, pretty well. And, they've, and, and Toyota has been running in NASCAR and, and Formula One, actually, with a, a bit less success. They had, a, they had a rough first couple of years. But is, is it, are we thinking that maybe Lexus is going to take over for Toyota in terms of motorsports? Are they going to keep them separate? You know, I'd like to see this car running in the GT class yeah. in the Rolex series or maybe even as, as a, uh, uh, an ALMS car, which would yeah. be awesome. I mean, I'd love to see Lexus in Le Mans. I, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. If, I mean, I, I think they should probably, I guess maybe what they want to do is make Lexus the equivalent of BMW or Mercedes, yeah. not only in street cars, but in racing too. Be kind of neat. I mean, we've got the uh, the IF the ISF F, yeah. also. So you've got their whole fast, um, the you know, speed the division. speed division thing. So I don't know. It'd be kind of neat to to see uh, uh, Lexus as a motorsports brand. Yeah, we're we're gonna keep our eyes open and uh, and hopefully that car will eventually show up in showrooms and then uh, you know maybe even on the racetrack. Yeah. So uh, moving right along, uh, Fiat. Uh, has 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 reinvented the 500, the Fiat 500, classic, tiny, you know, uh, not quite a micro car, but certainly a, a small hatchback. Uh, the same way Mini has made a comeback, um, you know, in, in terms of the BMW one, and they're they've been making them in Europe, and apparently they're going to be bringing them to the U.S. Yeah, I mean, news from you know today in Handelsblatt, they did, <laughs> one of the German Handel, papers, say that Handel, again? Handelsblatt. Okay. I don't even know if that's right. But I don't know what that means either. It means um, grab your something. I don't know. But anyway, um, so the talk is from Fiat that uh, they're going to be bringing it to the States along with Alfa Romeo's yeah. return to the States too. So you think they're going to be selling them in a, in a Fiat Alfa dealer? Well, I don't know. But, you know, the dealership thing is, is going to be... In interesting, because who knows? Are, are Maserati dealers going to want to sell a Fiat? I don't. The, I don't think so. But no. the other thing is, production is really the problem because in order to make it in, in order to sell it in the states, they have to make it somewhere around here where the yeah. labor is cheaper and the dollar. Well, apparently, Chrysler factories are like op open for lease by anybody well, now. So. Well, that's the talk. I mean, the w word came down I think earlier this week that Fiat and Chrysler were talking about yeah. production, and now this today I think or yesterday the the Fiat 
talked, w the, the idea was that Fiat would be building it either in America or um, in South America, and that would be, that came right from Fiat's technology director. Well, so. the, mini, the Mini's engine, at least the last generation Mini's engine, was from Brazil. It was made in Brazil, and it was actually, you know, it's, a, it's a, in my opinion, a very good engine. And yeah. actually, that brings up an interesting comparison. Um, you're, if you take the 500 uh, as compared to the base Mini, you know, you've got a hot, a, a hot hatch, suppo you know, supposedly, um, except the Mini's got a little more power, costs a little bit more money. Right. Um, but in terms of a retro revival of a small car, they're, they're on the same kind of plane of existence. Do you yeah, have a preference yeah. in one car versus another? Uh, I, you know, I'm kind of done with the Mini. I mean, I know you, you know how you feel about the Minis, but I'm, I'm all about the bringing the, something new here. I, I mean, no, I'm, I'm all about I'm the Fiat against, 500. I'm not against new cars, but, you know, oh, I, right. I happen to like my Mini, but I'm not saying that there aren't other good cars out there, too. Oh, okay, Matt, but... <laughs> well, maybe I have I know, said that. <laughs> I was going to say, who the hell are you? Been, I have said that. That's, that you tend to take that line. Once okay, in a while. but but if you talk about the Fiat in Europe right now, right. comes with a, a range of engines which start at fifty nine horsepower. Exactly. And There's no possible way that we'll get the kind of um, the, you know, the, the low the real budget low end, end yeah. horsepower that that. I mean, I, I think that if if Fiat does bring the five hundred over here, it's going to be in the upper end. It's going to be. I mean, Mini like is there, a cheap an, car. Like an Abarth version, right? Well, here's the thing, right? So Fiat's tuning division, Abarth. Um, Got a name that goes back in motorsports for oh, yeah. 45, 50 yeah. years. And they've made some great stuff, Abarth. They've made yeah. some really nice coach builds. They, they do, and Fiat is is bringing that back, uh, is, is sort of launching, is sort of relaunched Abarth in Europe this past year. Uh -huh. I would love to see Abarth come to America and then do a higher end 500, because basically, in order to compete with the Mini, it's not going to compete with the Nissan Versa or anything. No, no, it's a different car. It's a different car, even though, I mean, it's just a Fiat Panda underneath. So, yeah. I mean, it's not it's not a real premium platform. No. But, um, it actually has less space than the Panda, but more space than the Mini. So, hmm. it's going to be competitive. But if they bring it in, higher horsepower versions, and then do some Abarth tuning versions to compete with the Mini... Uh, John Cooper Works package, yeah. or even just the S, um, you know, in the range of like 175 horsepower or something. I don't know. Could, oh. be, could be a great uh, yeah. standoff. I mean, off. hopefully we can get, you know, a side-by-side -side comparo coming up soon. Hopefully we'll, soon. We'll see. Next decade, maybe. Now, Audi, um, who I, I love, I think they make phenomenal cars, um, the, they're, they're having a bit of an issue over there with the A5 and the S5 coupes. I happen to really like this car. I think I think stylistically, it's a fantastic looking yeah, car. Yeah, it's really, really. A and I mean, it's, it looks mu even better on the road than it does in pictures. Every time I see one, I just gotta, I just, I watch it drive off because I just <laughs> think it looks great. Absolutely, yeah. That's a car you can just look at all day long. I think. Yeah, but the problem is, is that they've been canceling orders for 2008 model year A5s and S5s. Well, that's that's it. Yeah, I mean, I started. I was reading this on one of the Audi forums where, like, Audi. Um, Owners who are not owners, but people who had, who had put down, um, who had Deposits, ordered, yeah. yeah, who had ordered 2008 versions of the A, the A5 and S5, yeah, that Audi was canceling their orders and then postponing them and for kind a of, model year 09, right? Yeah, and kind of putting the brakes on the 08 version, and then there's sort of creating a kind of environment where um, they're going to relaunch it in yeah. the, in 2000. I'm sorry, 2009. I haven't heard anything from Audi about this. But I mean, it just if I had to speculate, and, and I think this is going to be bad news for the customer, uh, uh, my speculation is the dollar's weak right now, the euro is strong, and there's the margins that they're making on those cars for the model right. year are not what they need to make. Unfortunately, it's already a premium-priced car. I mean, a good, S5, a good A5 will run you in the mid to high 40s, and a good S5 could run in mid to high 50s. Yeah, it's so, not cheap. So if they cancel 08 orders, re, re, reprocess them as 09 cars, they could automatically say, oh, well, this car is, is five dollars $6,000 more now. Well, that's an excellent point. I mean, the MSRP right now may be too low for them to be making any money on it. I mean, what if they bump it up? It's, if they cancel the orders, they don't have to honor... The, yeah, the original price. I mean, that sucks for people who have orders. In, so you could. I mean, it's possible. Uh, who knows? It's just the kind of thing where the dollar euro problem right now. I mean, with dollar, what, what was it? A dollar sixty to I the have, euro I right checked, now. It's but it's nuts. not. It's not good. It's really bad for these guys unless they. You know, I don't know what they're going to do unless they raise the price and then you know, competing with the BMW 335i coupe. 
not so. Yeah. Uh, well, the other the question is 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 the S5 a competitor for the 335 or is it a competitor for the the uh, the 650 BMW? In which case, the S5 is either a horrible value or the best value on earth. Either Good way, point. excellent point. Hopefully, they'll get their cars sooner rather than later. Coming up on Garage 419, a stripper makes a poor choice in uh, in stealing someone's identity, and it's lawsuit city out there in California. Stick around. Listen, you get down on me because I say Porsche instead of Porsche. Oh no, it's Porsche. You no, know, it's exactly. like I don't say Jaguar. <laughs> you say Lamont or Lamont? I say Lamont. I say Lamont. I say you know I do them both. Well, good luck they with your relive. Porsche. Good luck. <laughs> sources in the automotive world are, are reporting a, a flurry of lawsuits from the West Coast. Uh, now, here, here's how it works. This is the transitive property of lawsuit, okay? See, Tesla is suing Fisker, saying that Fisker uh, stole their electric technology to build their new Karma sedan, okay? And at the same time, Magna which is the company that builds transmissions for the, te for the Tesla Roadster, is suing Tesla, saying they bought all these two-speed transmissions, didn't pay for them, and are now going in a different direction with their technology. So it's like a tag you're it, tag yeah, you're it. Yeah, tag you're it lawsuit. Well, the interesting, the weird thing is, is like, so you've got these two sides of it. Now, yeah. the crazy thing, uh, the Tesla had hired Henrik Fisker. Yes to design a new sedan for them, right? Yeah, the, the White, White Star, Star. Yeah, okay. Which never apparently got off the ground because they still haven't gotten the roaster <laughs> together yet. Yeah. But, um, so they, they are, they're alleging that they hired him, paid him like 875 grand, and then he took the, that money and all their trade secrets yeah, and all went their, off. All their electric technology. And, and started the company that, um, that built that prototype, yeah. Karma, that we saw in, uh, in Detroit this year. Kind of a weird story. I mean, this guy has, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Henry, Henrik Fisker is a uh, well-respected designer. Yeah, I mean, he, designed, I, he, he did the Aston Martin DB9, I think. Yeah, and the, and he I mean, did the, the Jag. He did the, X, the Jaguar XF, too. Uh, he did the XF? I think he did the XF. It's, I mean, uh, the rear end looks just like an Aston Martin. I know he did the, the, uh, the BMW, um, the Z8. Oh, yeah, Remember he the, did, uh, yeah. Roadster? Um, you can, audience, come, you know, let me know if I messed up on the XF. I'm uh, sure well, you will. I'm sure they will. <laughs> but, they love that. But, uh, but essentially, uh, the ironic, so that's, that's one side of it. The other side with Magna is, originally, when Tesla first started building the cars, they suggested, Magna suggested, a single-speed transmission a la golf cart. Okay? Ah, Tesla press, said press no. and go. Yeah. Tesla said, no, we want a two-speed. And they said, are you sure? And they said, yes. They built them all at two speeds, and they, the roadsters kept blowing them because they had too much torque and they couldn't handle it. So now they're saying, forget the two speed, let's go back to a one speed, and allegedly have not paid for all those two speed transmissions they delivered and broke. I mean, first I don't understand, I mean, obviously I am not an electrical engineer. I don't understand right. the need for a transmission, like a mechanical transmission when you can, can't you just use yeah. software to do that? You, but the yeah, other like thing, a CVT kind of thing. Yeah, or like right in the code. I mean, can't there be? There are smart people who can do that. But I, I mean, the thing that is interesting to me is that I thought that the only reason why they did the two speed was so that they could keep on their four second to sixty. Yeah. So they have promise. a lower ratio for that. So they have a lower ratio to get to get that stuff off the line. I, you know, I don't know. Well, don't either way, that. we we will keep you guys updated as the as the trio of lawsuits. Yeah, I hope this doesn't uh, bring the entire. <laughs> Electric California. car. Electric just, car. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just plagued by anyway. Yeah, the whole thing will come down like a house of cards. So finally, uh, from the uh, sort of hot criminals department, which is which is a new. I, didn't, I just I didn't, invented it. I didn't know we had that department. <laughs> just invented it in my head right now for you guys. Fantastic. So get this: a stripper from Texas uh, named uh, Stacy Overly. What are the odds? Blonde <laughs> stripper from Texas. Sorry, just kidding. I love uh, Texas. So she stole an autistic woman's identity allegedly. Used that identity to get a car loan, a very big car loan, and went out and bought herself an 06 BMW and an 05 Maserati. Now, <laughs> mm, not bad credit. On they the... they have recovered the Maserati, and uh, and they have not recovered the BMW, which leads us to the automatic assumption that the Maserati must have broken down somewhere, and she just abandoned. You it. did not just say that. 
<laughs> they did. I look. I didn't That's build very the car. Harsh. Very I didn't harsh. build the car. I just talk about the car. Build me a better car, and I won't make fun of you. So maybe she would have gotten away. Well, actually, she did get away. She, she got away in away. the BMW. They can't find her. <laughs> they cannot find Come her. Come on, poor and Maserati. They, they say she's around Houston somewhere. You see a hot-looking stripper with a neck tattoo and a BMW. Email me. Barrier. I Email mean... me or post a comment, and I <laughs> promise you, I will go find her myself. <laughs> Fantastic. Until next time, Matt from the New York Motor Club, Mike Spinelli, and uh, we'll be seeing you around. See you later. Peace.